Well, the postman's been, and I've got a set of speakers to go and fit to the T5. So why have I decided to replace the speakers while doing a camper conversion? Because I'm going to be doing some long trips, and I've got Le Mans planned, and these speakers are actually quite knackered. So we try and listen up. The bass is pretty awful. The Alpine SEX 1750 S's. Why did I pick these speakers? Because they're two-way components, which means you get a better frequency response. So there's the treble, and there's the bass. Everybody loves what comes in the kit. So we've got a range of universal fit components. So that's the one that I'm going with, which is a little angle thing that's going to sit at the A pillar. You've got one here that looks like it screws onto the back of something. So it could go either through a panel or actually resting up against a panel. That I have absolutely no idea. So not unless it's a factory fit item that would turn and click into something that would hold it. I've never seen one of those before, but it could be handy. And then there's the standard one that would, that comes in the packet. Which if you were to just recess it would be in there. And it also fits in that one quite nicely. So I had some dodo mat left over from the thermal line in part of the project. So I decided to take the window regulator off and just put a couple of patches on the inside. It's just going to help the base response. I'm just going to wrap the wiring. And now I can feed that behind the A-pillar. Top tip, don't take them all together. Keep them all separate because it allows them to move a little bit. When they're all taped together is when they always snap inside. So I've applied some of the leftover sheets. So there's a full sheet there, full sheet there, and a couple of little off pieces just right in the middle just to help deaden it, everything. I don't advise it if you wanted a really good bass response from the speakers and it's just going that extra mile. As you can see it's quite fiddly to get the window regulator back on. Once you've done it a few times, it's fairly easy. And then I went overboard and done a load of the inside panel. Part of it's just with leftover sheets as well. So let's compare the size of the speaker so it's about the same. The only difference is, is the depth here, that's a, that sits a lot more in. So I think what I might do is just build a little bit of a wooden, a little bracket, but for now I'm going to get that in. So we can see the difference in the, in the speaker, about the same size. That just sits a little bit more proud. So I might have to build a little bit of a ring just to pull that out. But let's get them swapped over. wires coming through fully connected up it sits in there it's going to be a good sound but because I'm on a time frame here whether I get a chance to actually build a little bit of a, a little MDF or a plywood I'm going to have loads of plywood left over from the, the camper build just build that up, out a little bit more just to make a, a bracket because we compare the size of the depths See the factory one comes out quite a bit and it has got a little bit 
the protection over it as well. Just to stop the rainwater. All back on so you can see that's just got a little bit of flex flex there when it's screwed up right i'm gonna just take a little bit more off that i'm gonna just take it a little bit and just sit that a little bit higher so i'm just gonna hold that into place just trying to stage it two two and a half mil screw just in there. Right, just lining the second one up before tightening that all the way up. There's a little built-in, I think it's a capacitor in there, which just filters out the frequencies. Push that in. So that's been a welcome break from fitting out of the back of the camper. As I'm going to Le Mans, time is pressing on, so I'm going to have to get cracked on this. But it is a job off the list, and I'm so happy it's done. And I'm happy that I've gone for a good quality Alpine kit. Yes, it is the basic sort of replacement speaker Alpine kit, but to be fair, it is really, really good. So I think the main thing is switch it on. Let's have a listen. The only problem is copyright laws and stuff like that. I don't think I can actually play you some of the audio. But anyway, let's switch it on. See, the factory radio isn't particularly that great for the audio. So it made a big difference. So even on the first one, I can hear a massive difference in the bass and the treble. Because I worked on a mate's Caravelle and the speakers that were on there were so much more bigger but the bass is so much more considering the speakers are only little so let's see in the next video what stereo I'm actually going to opt for I've got me eye on a couple but I think this one's really really going to tick all the boxes because I'm really into hi-fi and I understand the staging of the tweeters the woofers and how much the bass response is really essential to to the whole overall experience Gone are the days when I want to put uprated amps in there because uprated amps is not what you need. You get a decent pair of speakers, decent radio. You don't need to have massive speakers unless you're having a proper little sound off. So I'm going to go for quality, not quantity. RMS values rather than peak wattage. What is the wattage on these speakers? The 45 watts per side RMS. So RMS is the true one. I think it's 240 overall. Let's have a look on the front of the box. 280 overall peak. I never know whether that's combined or the two of them. I think it's the two together. As I said in the next video, we're going to have a go at fitting a stereo unit. Hopefully it's going to be a top class one. And we're slowly going to get ready for Le Mans. I hope I get there in time because there's a lot to do in the back. Oh golly. So if you want to see how I get on, subscribe to the channel. It costs you nothing to do so. Give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And it's a ta for me. Ta-da.